So I, I do feel like there is this interesting phenomenon that's happening where we are talking about kindness in this kind of generic way um, that feels a little bit empty. Of course, no one's going to argue that we should be kind. Yes, we should be kind. Um, but but why and how and um, the specifics of it, I think, can be a little bit difficult to approach, um, especially because it really means having understanding. Like, how can we be kind without having understanding? Which to me is really what empathy is about. And so I feel like there is, you know, empathy has kind of become a buzzword as well. But really being able to understand the circumstances that lead to a person's experience can be so difficult for us because any one of us only has our set of experiences. And that's really where we turn to picture books to anchor our conversations and to extend our conversations. So there are a few books that I find very impressive and very helpful um, and also beautiful and very enjoyable. And let me introduce you to them. So this one is No Buried Treasure. It won the Newbery Award last year. Um, it is called Last Stop on Market Street, written by Matt De La Pena, who is usually a chapter book writing author, um, but he made this incredible picture book that is all about this boy, CJ, who is taking the bus on a rainy day with his Nana and just wishing why doesn't, why don't they have a car and look how happy his friends look, why do they have to wait in the rain and just feeling kind of covetous of other people's experiences. But Nana doesn't miss a beat and she brings CJ back and really anchors him in the experiences that they are having and shows him how they are special experiences as well. And they get to have these opportunities to have relationships with the lovely bus driver, to hear the music that a different passenger is playing on the bus instead of just listening to music in our headphones the whole time. And I feel like even as an adult, especially as a city dweller, it is so easy to feel inconvenienced by our, our urban circumstances. And what I love about this book is that it, it doesn't, it really strips away this idea of better, worse, more, less than, and anchors it back in the relationship and the experience that CJ is having with his Nana. When CJ finds himself dreaming of these things that are just not part of his life and his experience, she really reels him back in and brings him back to the moment to emphasize the fact that it's about their time together. It's about where they're going together. Um, and I won't reveal to you where it is that they are going, but it the whole trajectory of the story, I think really um, mirrors our trajectory, understanding how we fit into a larger community and what our role is within that. One of my favorite author illustrator combinations, Mac Barnett and John Klassen, they have this really incredible way of sneaking humor into the crevices of every story, but not letting that, um, not, not sacrificing heart for that comedy. And this book, Extra Yarn, I love um, about a girl, Annabelle, who just happens upon a magic box of yarn and she starts starts knitting and her little drab town um, starts transforming as she knits. And she doesn't just knit something for herself, she has extra yarn, so she starts knitting for her dog. And even the naysayers, the people who are making fun, she just knits something for them too. Their classmates, their teacher, the neighbors, the neighbors that don't even wear pants, They're, they get knitted goods. And she keeps going and she keeps going. And there's this image in here that I absolutely love of the whole town just completely transformed, of course by the magic yarn, but you know, if we, if we dig a little bit deeper and ask even our youngest students, what does that yarn stand for? What does it mean? They can pick up on these themes of kindness, of sharing, of considering other people's experiences. I won't tell you exactly what happened, but Annabelle's magic yarn catches the eye of a very wicked archduke who comes and tries to steal it away from her. Rest assured, it winds up in good hands, but not without some travails along the way. <laughs> this book, My Name is Sangol, it's not a new book, but it's new to me, and I just, I can't put it in enough people's hands. It has really blown my mind. It is the story of Sangol, this young boy who has just immigrated to the United States with his mom and sister. 
Sengol and his family are Dinka. They are from Sudan. And before leaving, um, before even leaving the refugee for the refugee camp, one of the elders in the town reminds him, "Your name is a part of our Dinka tradition," and really. Um, emboldens him to, to remember that, that his name is a, a strong part of his identity. The thing is, once Sungol and his family reach the U.S., even though they are extended a lot of generosity and kindness from strangers, and they are, they are grateful and appreciative, one thing that keeps not happening is the kids in his class are mispronouncing his name constantly, and he can't seem to muster up the courage to correct them. Until, lo and behold, he comes up with this brilliant idea to actually illustrate his name so that all the students can pronounce it correctly. And in fact, they start doing the same with their own names to illustrate the pronunciation of their names. It's a simple, straightforward story, but what I love about it is that all of the larger questions of why do people immigrate? What is instability in someone's home? What is a refugee? What's a refugee camp? Why do we have refugees? What are our responsibilities? Those are maybe not developmentally appropriate for young students, but the experience of relating to someone who is in an uncomfortable situation, who is feeling newness, who is feeling discomfort, those are things that most children can pull on. And it's just a matter of extending those to a larger circumstance. And that's something that I think this book does really beautifully. The last book that I'll tell you about is this very sweet story, How to Heal a Broken Wing. The thing that I love about this book so much is I feel like often as New Yorkers, we are rushing around so quickly, just trying to take care of our business as quickly as possible. And that is kind of the feeling that we get at the beginning of this story until this one small child notices a bird with a broken wing who is hurt in the middle of this very busy moment. The child pauses and picks it up, and, and it's only in that, that moment of stopping and, and extending his kindness that the mom starts to notice, and the whole family becomes invested in the caretaking of this pigeon. I just think it's a beautiful illustration of how one act of kindness can go so far. And for our young, our young students, I think it's incredibly powerful to remind them that there is a scope of consequence that we can all affect. And so, yes, we can't, these larger questions of, can we bring about world peace? Okay, I don't know how to tackle that, but I do know how to reinforce these acts of kindness through understanding. And that is, I think, the best thing that we can hope for at, for our youngest students, and picture books are a great way to do that. For more games and tools, subscribe to our channel.